All right, this is Chaotic Crypto, where our tyranny is defied. It is September 26, 2023, and we're going to do a quick market rundown, a little bit of an update, uh, see what's going on in the markets. I also wanted to talk a little bit about uh, BitBoy and his kind of uh, interactions with his channel and the deception and I guess the sort of like gangster mentality that's going on over BitBoy crypto it's very strange uh, I'm not trying to make too much accusations or anything but just judging from my view on Carlos like I, I, listening to that guy's voice and BitBoy like that guy seems sketchy <laughs> but whatever situation is going on over there it's like really kind of makes me really uneasy and it's really kind of breaking my heart a little bit like I thought I could trust the situation trust those people I want to trust Ben but like I don't know I just, <laughs> I've been watching Ben BitBoy Crypto since uh, 2023, um, and to whoever doesn't know, we'll go ahead and we'll type in BitBoy Crypto here. Um, it's probably going to pop up on my feet pretty heavily. Uh, BitBoy, BitBoy, it'll, just, it, it'll pop up on your feet real quick, it's like, it's uh yeah, it's just all this drama. You know, he, he apparently got arrested for loitering outside this guy's house. This is the guy I'm talking about. Like, he's very, very passionate about crypto. He's kind of a libertarian. I like to fancy myself as kind of a libertarian as well. Like, middle ground, moderate, but I really want smaller government, decentralized government. That's, and I kind of really identified with him. And, uh, Follow him since 10,000 subscribers. He started his own channel, had 1.4 million at their height. And uh, I guess he fired him, and it's just all kinds of crazy. And uh, yeah, for those who follow crypto YouTube, I've been watching him for a long time. And I honestly don't know what to think. It's just really annoying and disheartening. And like, I guess he should get his channel back, but it's just like, God, <laughs> what a mess. Um, just wanted to comment on that because that's like the hot thing right now. So hope everyone is okay. Hope they've worked that out. But, you know, he's like the main guy in the crypto world, crypto YouTube. So it's been the top. It's been the, it's been a crazy drama journey for sure. But anyway, um, you yeah, know, just going to look at the markets of Bitcoin, you know, stochastic RSI is kind of like my big indicator. Like this is a great zone to start loading up. I mean, do we get another cross down? I think, you know, 21 to 23, 24K is certainly in play. I, that's, but for that to happen, we'd have to have a cross down on here, which does happen. So, you know, maybe we get a giant uh, descending wedge on this thing. Yeah, something like, you know, maybe we get one more cross down. So in that case, in the RSI, we come down here, fall down, then break up type of thing, fall out of that wedge. That's something to look out for. But that's pretty, it's pretty, uh, pretty hellacious. But we are still just going sideways. There's nothing crazy about the price, the charts or anything. That's uh, 26.2 is kind of being held right now. Let's look at the daily. And actually, let's look at the weekly. Yeah, weekly is Pretty steady. Take a look at the daily. Now, what's nice? Yeah, what is good is that the daily stochastic RSI is fully is becoming recharged. So, if we get another day or two of pullback, maybe we get down to twenty five. Maybe we get down to twenty twenty five seven or something like that. I, I don't want to go down to twenty five two again or twenty five nine. We don't want to go down here too much more because every time we go down here, it's like it's going to create. You know, it, you start testing level too many times, it makes it weaker. But maybe we kind of fall. Maybe what we're going to do is kind of form a wedge here. And we could fall down 25.9, 25.8. Something else to spook the markets one more time. That would make some sense. Oh, yeah, 24.8 was the bottom. Well, you know, we could... There is there is room to fall down um, the twenty five eight region, but like what I do like is the stochastic daily coming down, recharging these indicators is important. 
We want a little bit more down action, four hours, a little bit exhausted. Yeah, yeah. I also want to look at Ethereum. Ethereum is often a leading indicator. It's this number two uh, most popular crypto. It's number two market cap. It's a big dog now. And it actually has held up pretty well this bull cycle. Let's see if I can take a look at this wherever I put it. There we go. Find a different one. So got it on the daily. Yeah, so this is from the top of the market 2021 on down. Yeah, it's held it's held a pretty good uh, support and we are making you know lower highs or higher lows, sorry. Um we basically kind of have a giant ascending triangle sort of forming here. And we don't want to go below this. If we do break this, the target uh, target could be you know, back down to the bottom around 1,000 to 1,200. But I'm not anticipating that. You know, on the daily, there's not seeing any indicators for RSI divergences. But let's look on the weekly. So weekly looks exhausted. I mean, look at the stochastic RSI here. Um, we haven't been this low since 22. Yeah, we're just we're just exhausted. So I mean, I feel like Ethereum might make a good run at. We did go to as far high as 2100, about 2100. That's pretty good. I'm expecting this thing to go at least to 10k, uh, minimally nine. But I think it may shoot for uh, 1200, something along those lines. And we can try to make a little bit of a price prediction. Uh, Ethereum is definitely a safe bet. Uh, it's one of my dollar cost averages. It's one I recommend. When people ask me what do I get into um, in crypto, the, the, the top four I say is uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Cardano, ADA, and uh, Link. And those are the ones I really, I, mean, I, I mainly say Bitcoin and Ethereum for beginners if you don't know what's going on. But, you know, those are absolutely the big dogs, so. And they get, they get you in, it gets you interested, hopefully, and, and you go from there. So I'm going to take a quick gander. 2017. From peak to peak, from, you know, yeah. Peak to peak to 4,700%. Go again. You know, 240 percent it's so yeah, it's just, just kind of hard for me to really extrapolate what I think this thing because I feel like we've just been in a big consolidation pattern and it's definitely been less volatile than this cycle being that we only had 250 percent from from previous all-time high to the, the next one it's hard to say that we'd have more than a hundred percent right? But 100% with Twix is 9K. And that is the minimal. I'm thinking, you know, 150, 200%, something like that. But I th again, I think the last bull run was pretty lackluster. And, uh, yeah. This is a quick, uh, quick run looking at Gala Games. I was just seeing it. <laughs> I hope this thing could survive. Anyway, back to Ethereum. Um, oops, Let me get back here. My apologies. There we go. Um, yeah, yeah I, don't, I really don't know what to think about Ethereum as far as like its real ability, where it could go. Um, it's hard for me to argue that it would do more than to ten to twenty k. Just given the previous price action, but we could be surprised. Let's take a look at the um, price action on the U.S. dollar. It just keeps ripping. It won't stop. I think on one, two, three, four, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. On this week, usually after eleven candles, there's a big pullback. And I, I said, 
I suspect there's going to be a big pullback. And what likely will happen is we'll have a, we'll make another, a larger triangle of some kind. I just, I don't imagine it coming up and breaking that, but, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know yet. This is all speculative, but the, the DXY, the US dollar, really needs to chill out. And I think it's definitely, we are having some divergence on the four hour. It's definitely running out of steam, taking a look at this thing. Um, it's not showing me anything exactly on the daily, but on the four hour is definitely running out of steam. On the daily, I mean, look at how high this thing is. It's just, it's, it's going to have to pull back here at some point. Um, yeah, I don't have anything else more to say about that. Let's take a look at some other uh, other things. Actually, we'll take a look a little more closer at Ethereum. Sorry to jump around. But I wanted to look at the daily. Daily's coming down. I think we're going to bounce off this level. It's, it's decent. If we do break this down, we definitely need to look at like 1100 to 1200 for Ethereum. It's definitely possibilities. Minimally like 13, 1400. If, if that happens, right? Four hours, a little bit exhausted. There isn't much volume, which is a little bit concerning. And the volumes are just tapering off. Hmm. Very little volume. Durable goods, ORS, and OM. Yeah, let's take a look at something different. Okay, open interest still kind of medium range, seven point six two billion. Uh, what I'm really watching is the Bitcoin dominance. I think we've pretty much hit the top at fifty. Fifty percent dominance makes sense to me. Um. But you know, if we get a bear crash, it's, we'll probably go to sixty percent dominance. But I, we're redlining at this entire year. I think we're kind of at our top. So that means right now might be a good time to start positioning yourself for altcoins, an altcoin season, perhaps, or at least get ready. I mean, it's a long-term indicator of the next couple of months. So, and uh, if you're in green, forty-six will probably be around the same forty-six level. Uh, this evening as well. They print that at 8 p.m. every day. Do, do, do. I wanted to look at uh, a couple indicators on. Oops. My bad. Come back to that. Yeah, so we're sixteen percent. We're like most people. Sixteen percent of people are bullish right now. Like eighty percent of people are basically bears. I mean, I think contrarian right now is a good time. It's a good time to really be thinking about, hey, we're gonna have some bullish activity in the next three to six months. Like we've been in a bear market for two years. Um, another interesting fact. I mean, we're about to be in October. October in the last market was the market top pretty much so two years from now 2025 October 2025 is probably going to be a very bullish time and probably close to the peak of whatever the market is going to be so just be ready we'll have probably we'll have someone else you know in the presidential office hopefully <laughs> we'll have uh, a different economic situation hopefully and by then you know we're probably going to be a lot more ecstatic, a lot happier, hopefully a better society by then. It's been a really rough few years, no doubt about that. If it goes out to anybody who survived this whole dilemma. Uh, don't want to talk about it. But yeah, we're you know, we're still we're still in a bear market. It's a great time to accumulate right now. So we're back into a yeah, Bitcoin dominance. It's a lot higher. It's very little volatility. That's will, that will change. I think uh, October will definitely be October, November. I mean, we're going to probably have a, a seasonal um, Halloween, Christmas rally that happens every year. Um, I, you know, the next 
few days. We may have a big retracement there. The futures options closing happens on Friday, and that often creates volatility to the up and down. Apparently that this options is smaller than the last quarter, so it might not be as volatile. But I'm thinking we're going to have some bullish news around Thanksgiving, Christmas, maybe between. It may even be next month, like before Halloween. Like I'm thinking we're going to be having ETF news or some kind of positive, um, you know, there'll be some positive news out there. It could involve Voyager. It could ha involve Celsius. Um, I'm thinking it could only be. But <laughs> so, I mean, I think the stock market is a little bit concerning. That's what a lot of people are talking about. Everyone's concerned about the stock market. Uh, and uh, pretty rightfully so. I, I mean, it kind of does look a little bit, a little bit concerning. Let's take a look at S&P. No, we did drop a fair more, more today, I think, down percent and a half. But, I mean, really, our our line of, of, of support is around 4,100. I think we might have one more fall. And if we do fall right there, I think that's when Bitcoin may go to 25, maybe even 23 to 25. And my level be, is, is 23 mainly because of this gap right here between 23 and 25 and the VPVR. It's a big gap. And just not a whole lot of buys happen in this region. It doesn't mean we have to go there. Like, not a whole lot of buys happen in this region. I really don't think we're going to go down to up 13K. So it's not necessary, but it's like, uh, it could be something that happens. But SPX, yeah, I could see. I could see that going down. Also, um, side note, Link really rallied over the last couple of days. I meant to make a posting about it yesterday because I, I took some Link profits and posted it elsewhere. I believe I saw it. I thought it was down to 4.7.2. I guess it had changed. NTC. Oh. My bad. NVIDIA. Yeah, where's NASDAQ at? The NASDAQ did fall. I mean, we're on the daily. We're pretty low here. Very low on the stochastic on the daily. Um, thing is, if, if we lose momentum with the NASDAQ, we're kind of making a... Maybe we're making a bull flag or some kind of falling wedge. But if we fall below this area down here, 13, then probably this area would be next support line. Yeah, I mean, the stock market definitely looks like it wants to fall down a little bit, so I understand everyone's concerns there. So uh, check out any other news. Ethereum hits 10 billion revenue faster than Facebook, Microsoft. I think Ethereum is getting ready for a little rally. Link, you know, it rallying as hard as it did the last few days, maybe indicating some bullish uh, momentum underneath. So Ethereum might move. Chase Bain tells UK crypto users to take their business elsewhere. That's not great. Binance Japan, Mitsubishi joined forces. Leaked documents reveal Microsoft plans to bring crypto wallets to Xbox, probably. Prominent analysts reveal six old coins to watch closely. Celestia reveals a drop. I don't know what Celestia is. US lawmakers. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's bullish things popping up, and we're still being suppressed pretty pretty heavily right now. Everything is still pretty unsure and uncertain. But yeah, Link is Link has been really running on the weekly. You know, Link is up, you know, twenty four percent. Daily. Yeah. Well, once again, uh, click the likes, hit subscribe, leave a comment below. I've had a few comments here lately, and I do respond to them as soon as I can. Uh, there's not too many of you watching, probably, but I do appreciate all your support, and uh, we're going to keep on doing this throughout this. I'm not going to say we're in a bull market yet, but we're getting there. Another three, six months, it's going to get really exciting. I want to try to be on top of the projects that are moving the most. What are the narratives going to be? I would say artificial intelligence for, for sure. Uh, DeFi may come back as a narrative. Um, utility might be the real run. You know, Link, Oracles, and 
um, you know, it's data storage, decentralized data storage, preservation. I think Cardano is going to be a big run, big runner. I think Filecoin, Storej will be good. Layer 2s, I think Layer 2s will do decently, but they probably won't be the buzz that they were last cycle. Um, Adam, Adam got hit pretty hard today. I don't know what's going on there. Like, I like to have staking rewards, and Adam gets 20%. Uh, Kava is 18% on Exodus, both on Exodus. But uh, right now, like, when you can't really make money trading on these things or price appreciation. Might as well get free tokens out of it. So, XDC is a really good buy zone. I think that's going to move similar to XRP and XLM, the ISSO tokens. So I think those are, XRP is certainly on a 10 to 20x. I think Near is going to do at least 10 to 20x. And a lot of these, there's a, so much opportunity with all of this optimism. I think it's a layer two of some kind. But a lot of interesting projects out there. We'll go back into those on another date, but I just wanted to check in on price action, make a little um, mention about BitBoy, and, uh, which is Ben Armstrong now. And part of the, what, another reason I wanted to mention him was just like how like in a bull run, you know, he started from kind of like nothing and he created this giant channel and his ego got the best of him. And last cycle, the ego got the best of me, like, I thought the prices would keep going up or I'd be okay. And then, like, you know, I got a little cocky. I got a little full of myself. And then, you know, you know, when things are going really good, it's hard to predict or prepare for when things really go to go to hell. So just want to keep your ego in check and take profits and make sure you're not totally losing your head. And I think he lost his head a little bit. So we'll see what happens there. Anyways, uh, this is going to be it for me today. Check in later, but uh, hang in there and hot along. Peace.